Okay. Oh yeah, we're expecting high gust winds and a torrential downpour. Uh huh. Cold air meeting hot air. Uh, the heat heat wave shall be broken. Mm hmm. Broken. Severed. Cut asunder. Yeah, tomorrow, Sunday, is supposed to be uh, what, a high of 86, something like that. 85, 86. Which is a drastic cool down from uh, 95 plus with the heat index. Oh boy. Um, well, uh, we are awaiting uh, the call in from. Uh, our official Mega Life 21 uh, commercial voiceover specialist, William H. Morrow III, and um, let's see what's up with him. Um, you know, um, our um, IT department uh, director, Mega Life 21 IT, IT department director, had to completely disassemble his ultimate computer because the particular blue fluid that he used in his 100% uh, liquid cooled PC leaked out. It got all over the motherboard. There's something about this blue stuff. He said it, it just got out and it's all gummy and gunky and got all over everything so he's using a different liquid and uh, he decided just to liquid cool the CPU and have the rest of it air cooled like mine I, I, I have a liquid cooled CPU and the rest is air cooled but he needs to order one of those magnetic dust filters like he like I have but what I did was I, um, I'm giving him a, a piece of the uh, air condition filter cut out that I cut out that he can use until he gets the magnetic one because the, the, the mesh with the magnetic dust filter is very very fine it's, it, it traps everything it's like it's almost like material like a handkerchief but but it doesn't you know, it allows all the air to go through, but it's like extremely fine mesh. And it has that material, like like the refrigerator magnets, the mm -hmm. ones that, that, that bend, mm -hmm. like rubber. Yeah, it's, it's like that material. You know, providing the, there is an alloy of metal around your intake fan mm -hmm. on the computer. Mine is plastic. Ta -da! So you would have to either rely on the suction power of your intake fan to keep the filter in place or, or invisible would, tape or you would have to tape it. Mm -hmm. You would have to tape it. Uh, I wouldn't use the Gorilla tape because that, that tape, no, that's No, invisible tape. That powerful shit. That's powerful. Because you have to take it off to rinse it periodically. Mm -hmm. The problem is you haven't been able to find where your intake, intake valve is. Fan is. You know? mm -hmm. Usually you can, but not with these compact PCs of today. Maybe it's liquid cooled. I don't know. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you would know that by now. Just because it's old, 2008. You know. Yeah. Well. Oh. oh, there he is. Hold on. Hello, is this William H. Morrow the third? Hello, Chairman. Dr. William, how are you? Hey. Very good, sir. Very good. Today is the last day of the heat wave. Thank God. Well, until they're right this time. Yeah, we, yeah, well, yeah. To That's say the really, because it's been bad for everyone. Yeah. yeah, to say the least. Um, so where are you? Where are you now? I can, feel, I can barely hear you, bud. Where is your location now? Right now I'm down in Maryland, Baltimore. Baltimore, Maryland. Good, good. Yes, sir. 
My oh. wife Blake, by the way. Right. Now, I, I know you have something very special to say about Newsletter Censored. Well, that's right. We want everyone to know that the best way to join your organization is to go to www.newslettercensored.com and get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. We're all living, everybody, in end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Here we go, bud. Okay, thank you very much, William H. Morrill III. Yes, sir. And we were uh, discussing before about how in our society, everybody, the government, society, people in general, uh, parents, everybody's afraid to use that magic little word called no, because they're afraid of offending any particular group or person you know, uh, uh, even in competition, you know, they want, they, they, they tell all the children in school, you're all winners, everybody, they're afraid of hurting somebody's feeling. Well, that's wrong, you're setting people up for failure, uh, because if you keep telling them they're all winners and whatever, not everyone is. And then when they do fail, they're not, they're all shocked. And that can destroy the thinking system, the health system, everything. Uh, I think I mentioned about a month or so ago about that gentleman that gave a uh, graduation speech in some place and he was very blunt and honest was commended, commended for it he said you are not all special you've got to make yourself special yeah it's not the real so, world you, know, you have people like uh, and, uh, Tony Robbins and all these people and what have you that everybody is this everybody's gifted everybody it's just not true everybody does not have an idea in their head for a great product they say everybody's greedy well, to what degree do you measure creativity? I mean, uh, you ask most people if you were starting a business, what would you do? I think 90 plus percent would say, uh, I don't know. You know, they're not thinking about it. And uh, how do we measure creativity or whatever success? You know, happiness. I'm saying no. We're afraid to say no to people that like you are not special. So you have to make yourself special. special well, well, plus, plus happiness does not always have a monetary. Uh, uh, a label on it. I mean, some people are just well, flat out happy without. Some people are, and, and some make their own happiness by doing volunteer uh, or volunteer or low paying work. Look at your Peace Corps volunteers. They love helping others in foreign countries, what have you. And in this country, too, are the people who saw the Asian Army and other charitable groups. They're not being paid big, big dollars, if any. A lot of, a lot of his volunteer work will. A lot of your communities, your fire departments and EMTs are volunteers as well. They're not paid. They have other jobs. And they have to respond whenever they hear that sound or get that call on their radio. Yeah. So it's, it, it's, in many ways, better payment than a yeah. dollar sign. So success and happiness does not have a price tag on it. does not have a monetary value. No, it does not. Uh, always does not. Um, We've said that before, too. Remember? I yes. Think Ago, but you know, I, I know a lot of people that have a lot of money. And they're very poor, and I know a number of people that don't have a lot of money and they're very wealthy. They've got great friends and family around them, or whatever. Not the dollars made them, perhaps, but uh, they're happy as can be. I yeah. met a gentleman years ago on the in Patterson, New Jersey. I was told when I go into this chicken establishment, fried chicken place, it's the greatest you will ever have. Well, all those people were not kidding. It was phenomenal. Absolutely. I told the guy, you've got a gold mine here. Why aren't you opening more places? He goes, you said, son, I was younger then, obviously. He said, son, I'm happy with my one place. I don't want to get any bigger. I don't need all the money in the world. I'm happy right now where I am. There's another example. Right. You know, I know I've got something. I can talk to you the next Colonel Sanders. have thousands of franchises out there. He didn't want that. So it's not for everybody. Yeah, he wanted to stay local. He didn't he want... to stay small. Yeah, because it... And I guess avoid the headaches too as well. Yeah, hey, you, you have to you have to constantly fly to the different regions and, you know, and look the, the other franchise, you know, the other branches over constantly. Yeah. It's, it's a bigger responsibility. I guess requires more time more uh, well, cuts into your every, just everything. Yeah, you cuts know, into your spare time. Lawsuits, you're somebody trouble, you're gonna buckle them, what have you, slip in your store, or whatever, and you increase the odds with, with each storefront you open. So, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, there, happy with this one. there are like people. the advertising man I knew, and he, he just gave it up one day. He said, I've had enough. My health is deteriorating. and all eating out of stomach. Even one of the biggest ad agencies on Madison Avenue in Manhattan, New York. Uh, he said, I, one day, he said, all this money, I don't even have time to spend it. He was very wealthy. And he said, now, I'm a one-man landscape operation. I mow lawns and trim hedges. And he goes, I've got to tell you, I have never been more relaxed and he has time to enjoy well, his money. He's got, you're right, Jim. He's got time to enjoy life, what life is really about, I assume, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, we, we were talking, uh, I, I mentioned an article that I found. Yeah, in, speak up a little bit okay. I should have brought the stovepipe. <laughs> I, I, uh, I mentioned an article before when the show started that the company hostess uh, was not forced into bankruptcy by union workers. The fact of the matter is the CEO of Hostess got a raise from $750,000 a year to $2.25 million, okay? And that's a, that's a huge jump, a huge raise. And his executives got a staggering $1.8 million in bonuses after the bankruptcy filing. Uh, and then the same executives admitted, Billy, that the money for worker retirement funds was used for company operations instead. So people don't realize just how much money is wasted that's sucked up by the CEOs. Oh my God, some of these, uh, it's incredible. And just look, if, you, if you're the CEO of a lot of these corporations too, you have to build into your contract anyway. Really, almost care less if you get fired. The compensation you get if you're released. Some of these guys get 20, 30, 40 million dollars if they're released or fired. I mean, where's your incentive to leave? Yeah, the golden parachute, right. Oh, yeah. my, my, my God, I mean, if you're fired, why should you get anything? Get out of here. You're not moving. What do you give a, a regular bottom level employee when you fire him? Basically, nothing. You're fired. We don't want you anymore. Yeah. And the CEO gets all these huge perks and bonuses. Some of them even get things, if they're let go, they get like the use of the corporate jet for one to two years, and I forget what all. The things I've heard and read about. And it, it's really ridiculous. And these are your stockholders and everybody that are paying for all this, this suffering. Mm. I mean, they, had, they, they bought your stock because they had good faith in you and your board members and your leadership. And this is how they're repaid in essence. It's like it's like the Alex Rodriguez of the New York Yankees sitting on his ass all season and uh, and you know and getting paid for it because of the contract. You know, it's it's the CEO. Wait a minute! I believe he hit two home runs the other day. In in in, 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 in the minors. The minors. Is he coming back finally? Was it? Is he still in the minors? No, he's coming. He's coming back. But but Derek Jeter's is. Re-injured. Re-injured. He's re-injured. Re he 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 didn't even come back from the first. One day. Injury. One day from the first injury. He, he was put on the 15 days you know, already. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, just think of all these football players and and pro wrestlers that you know they 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 tear something or they dislocate something and they just tape it up and and they suck it up and they continue to play. Some do. A lot don't. I remember years ago, Greg Nettle was the third baseman. He's the third baseman for New York Yankees. Right yes, the 70s outstanding third baseman. He was an excellent caller, very good. Uh, uh, he did not play in a number of games. And when I heard this, I, I was shocked being a football player, always playing in pain. He did not play because he had a hangnail. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I played, with a, I played football with a fully ruptured Achilles tendon, and he could play a baseball game, or a couple of them, with a hangnail. Yeah, but didn't he, didn't he hear a Clippers? I don't, yeah, I, I mean, how, how bad could that have possibly been? I blame the trainer, I blame the trainer. Well, the trainer, the team doctor, or somebody, I mean, it's just a hangnail, come on. It's a hangnail. Out there. I would have clipped that sucker off and yeah. said, get back out on the field.
But then again, let's be honest, this is the same Greg Nettles, too, who's fat broke and whole plate. And five little rubber balls rolled out onto the onto whole plate out of his broken bat. Oh, it's really? Life, I think. It's illegal, obviously, but it's funny. His back was lo his bat was loaded, huh? Oh, it was loaded. We're not talking alcoholic beverages here. Yeah. I used to I used to enjoy the uh, the games between the umpire and, and Gaylord Perry. Remember he used to put Vaseline on his on the ball? Yeah, that and the nail files for other pitchers. Nail files, yeah. They tried more different tricks. <laughs> yeah. It's odd. Nowadays with cameras at every every possible angle, how do you think you're possibly going to get away from it? Well, speaking of putting Vaseline on the ball. Yeah. And, you know, ball I think the lifespan of Major League Baseball was four pitches. <laughs> so then they do not hit foul or whatever. The guy gets it back to the umpire, he'll throw a new ball in. Now you're, he's not going to appeal the Vaseline on that ball. When that's, the catcher hands the ball back to him for a new ball. That's why your that's why your tickets are so expensive to see a baseball game. One of the reasons. Yeah. You know, well now you now you have a, a, a worse problem than than these guys we just mentioned. We uh, we have the problem of uh, the performance uh, enhancing drugs, the steroids, and uh, people think they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, and they they think their record, you know, they think their record. You know, yes. As you know, I'm a big Baltimore Orioles fan, and our Chris Davis may may break the record of Roger Maris, and there are a lot of people saying. The record of Maris, 61, is what counts. Because when Barnes and I think it was Sammy Sosa, I think Barnes. No, no, it was uh, uh, is Mark McGuire and Mark Barry McGuire. and, 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 and Sammy are, Sosa. Those aren't the real. The, that is not the real total break. Because I was aided by drugs. Yeah, they they were on the juice. Yes. Right. This thing, the real one that counts is Hank Aaron. I mean, you know, what am I saying? I'm sorry. Seven hundred and yeah, Roger Maris, 61. Right. Right, months, that's yeah. the real measurement break. Now, I have to agree with that. I really do. There was no, uh, it was not steroid aided back then. So how many home runs does it does this Oriole have? I'm not sure if it's 37 or 39 right now. Really? Yeah. Uh huh. Wow. Is he? Is he? Tied the record for the tied the tied the record for the most at the uh, halfway point in All Star break. He's definitely gonna gonna surpass the uh, the greatest all time uh, Oriole for home runs. That's for sure. Well, yeah, that well, you never know. I mean, injuries can enter in. Our I think our all time leader was uh, was fifty or fifty one. I think it was fifty though. Well, what? How long has this man been in baseball? Well, he's been on with the Orioles two or three years. He wasn't with Texas maybe one or two. I, so I he's a young he's a young guy. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. He, he's got he's got a whole life ahead of him, really. Oh my God, yeah, he's got many more years ahead, barring injury, of course, like you say. You know, so you always you always have to worry about the intangibles. Yeah. Well, I hope he makes it. it. Happen. I, I, I do too. He's, he's clean. Fan. He's clean. He had drug test. Okay, he's clean as can be. Good for him. Good for him. I like to see it. I don't listen to that talk. People say, "Oh, he's on steroids." He this many. He goes, "I'm not. I've been tested." He goes, "Let me talk." That's a good attitude because I'm busy playing my game for my team. Uh, I can't worry about the talk. I passed every test. Good, good for him. I like to see a clean, a clean athlete break break attitude. records. Yeah, he has a very good attitude. He's nice too. Yeah, because uh, yeah, uh, yeah Sosa, you know, you know. Sosa, McGuire, they were juiced up. Jose Canseco was juiced. Bonds was juiced. Yep. You yep. know, uh, I don't think. Oh. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't recognize Bonds uh, beating Hank Aaron. No, no. Uh -uh. no. Hank Aaron was clean and uh, he was just a great athlete. Great yeah, he player. was. He was, and actually, people don't, people don't realize it, but, uh, but uh, um, um, Alex Rodriguez's next. Home run record is uh, is Willie Mays. He's really, I didn't even know that. He's second. He's second to Willie Mays in in the all time record. Yeah. He passed up uh, um, 
all the others like uh, Mike Schmidt and um, uh, uh, Johnny Bench and all them guys. Uh, I don't their names so much anymore. That's pretty sad. You know? Yeah. Great players back in those great, great era of the, uh, well, the greatest third baseman of all time, uh, Brooks Robinson. Brooks you know, Robinson you know? of the Orioles. Oh. Yeah. He was like a vac. He was like a him and Nettles were like vacuum cleaners at third base. I, I think he had. I think. I think it was 15 Gold Gloves and 13 All Star characters, maybe more. It was just a down to earth, nice guy. And now he work, works for the Orioles as a broadcaster. So. 15. Oh yeah, he's broadcasting Brooks Robinson. Oh, he has been for decades. Yeah. Yeah, and him and Boo Powell, I, they helped each other a lot. They all do. They Boo Powell. The, all of them are down there in the uh, the Camden Yards. Yeah, Camden Yards was the first, the, the first uh, new nostalgic. I'm sorry. Yeah, Boot Burgers. He's got a wonderful sandwich place out in the about just just beyond right field up by the warehouse there. They say it's incredible. Oh yeah, the hamburger place by Boot, owned yeah, by Boot Powell. Cool. Yeah, I uh, think I think Camden Yards was the first uh, nostalgic park. Uh, well, uh, all the newer ones too are trying to copy it, and they just can't get it the same, though. Yeah, everybody copied the. I, I think the same company, um, the same company that designed. Um, yeah, the architects and the builders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the what a few. Inner. The same builders that did the um, uh, uh, the uh, the the Boston Harbor area, or was it, or was it? Um, uh, Inner, uh, Harbor, Inner Baltimore. Harbor, Baltimore's Inner Harbor. Right. Then we have Fenway Park, which is wonderful. I'm not a Red Sox fan because it's a rivalry with the Orioles too. But it's so traditional, you have to love it. You know what I mean? Oh, of course. Fenway like, is Fenway is the uh, is the oldest uh, is the oldest uh, next to Wrigley Field. Tradition, the Wrigley Field. I mean, you know, I don't even follow the National League. These are great fields. Yeah, the, these are historic. So history behind them. These are his, these are historic landmarks. They really are. They really are, and I think everybody loves them, even if you're not a fan of that team. That's you know, true. I, I think they're I think they're wonderful parks. They're intimate, you know, smaller than most. Uh, there's, something, there's something special about. Them. Yes, nostalgia. Well, well, very much. Yankee Stadium was very lopsided. I didn't like that. Uh, it was very unfair to right-handed batters. Yes, but there was so much history there, I hated to see it knocked down. I thought that was odd. It felt funny. I think they took the facade. They took the facade with them, you know, the, um, that, that thing that looked like, it looked like a fence, looked like a white picket fence. Yeah, you made part of it. On you top, know, yeah. A lot of the seats and everything else like that. Yeah, the, they retained the facade just it's just to have a, a an old Yankee Stadium look. But but now it's it's fair to both left-handed batters and right-handed batters. But uh, that's basically it. So, uh, Sir William, uh, we're going to get back to. You're welcome to stay with us. We're going to start. No, it's my, it's my normal time to leave you fellas again. So it's great to talk to all of you as always. Yes. All your all your listeners and both of you. Thank you very have much. A, have a good remainder of your show for today, and I will talk to you later, James, like always in the evening, okay? Yes, yes, William Morrow. Thank you, all and right. take care. Jimmy, Reverend, I so hope everybody have a good time. All right, take care, gentlemen. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, that was William H. Morrow III. Now let uh, us sink our teeth uh, into these, yeah, readings. Take right. away here, please. Yeah. Okay. Reading time here. So I can see what I'm doing. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, here's something light and easy on us. Yeah. Well, we got we got a little light with the with the sports talk with William Morrow, but you know uh, what do we got here? Why is the heart so slow to follow the mind? The background. I split from an intimate love relationship that was toxic. Post split, we became friends. But after a brief, sweet period, I had to end the friendship too. 
Well, there was obviously a compatibility problem in the love relationship that carried over onto the friendship. I mean, because in order to be good friends, in order to be friends with somebody, you have to be compatible with them. I know this was the right choice, but I still mourned the loss of a woman dear to me. Did they go for counseling? Friends? No, no. When, when, no, when they were, when what they the were, hell friends have to go for counseling? No, before, when they were a couple. Well, he wanted to end that part. That was toxic, man. That was toxic. You know what? Gary No uses that word a lot, too. This is the new catch phrase, right? Well, maybe it was toxic. Toxic. This is toxic. That's toxic. Toxic is is something poisonous. That's correct. So that must it must have been really bad. But it you is. can't you can't freely use the word toxic for every damn thing. You know that that that, that represents a serious situation if it's toxic. Passionate emotions are addictive, especially with a hot-looking chick. We are loath to give them up. If you've seen some women, you would understand why. Even if they are accompanied by pain. That is true. That the is true. stronger and more frequent they are, the harder they can be to relinquish. Well, you know, sex is very addictive. If How have... soon we let go, if we ever do, depends on the balance between the good and the bad, plus individual factors such as self-esteem. Just because you figure out what to do doesn't make you feel any better about doing it. Well, uh, life is definitely an ongoing struggle and uh, Love is uh, not, uh, it is a bittersweet, uh, it is a bittersweet pill, it's a it swallow, to swallow, you know, it is uh, it's a lot of disappointment and pain that mm -hmm. goes with it. Uh, I just saw something here about Cause animals, of human did you, nature. did you, did you hear about the story of the two dogs here in New Jersey that were tied, chained in the backyard and they were both seeking to get out of the heat. They're in the heat wave. And you know when animals do that, dogs, they... They, they try to pull the, the chain, the ground. break the no, chain. No, they, they make a hole and they, they lie in the hole. They, they, Cooler. they burrow. Well, this one dog, you know, got so hepped up to get out of the heat, he saw in the other yard there was like a, um, a lean-to made out of like a, a, a corrugated loman or something. So there was a chain link fence there. So he climbs the chain link fence. Remember, he's got the chain on, collar. Hangs himself. Hangs himself. One neighbor called the animal control, but a day late. Now what the hell are two dogs being chained out in the yard, obviously where the sun can hit them or whatever because... And no water. There was a, 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 a pan of water, yeah, but, but it was water, still faint. The water was probably hot as hell and, and, and filthy. Yeah. Cesspool. So in other words, this is this is animal abuse. Yes. Yeah. 